Hello, welcome to my channel. Today I thought I'd show you how I paint white roses. I drew my vase on tracing paper. I folded it in half, drew one side of the vase and then turned the whole thing over and drew the other side of the vase. That makes certain both sides are the same. I'm using acrylic paints, titanium white, primary yellow, raw sienna, raw umber, French ultramarine blue, sap green and alizarin crimson. To save some space, I've taken to painting on 140 pound watercolour paper, which you can do with acrylics. And um, you don't have that problem storing canvases. I don't have much um, storage space where I am at the moment. And so this works well for me. I completely forgot to do my background, which I should have done before I transferred the drawing of my vase. And so there you go. We do these things, don't we? So this is an opportunity for me to show you what I do. I use primary yellow and French ultramarine blue, both of which are fairly transparent, and paint around the edges. And um, actually it doesn't really matter if I go over the picture that I've drawn because you can still see it through there. And anyway, I'm using acrylic paint and I can paint over it. I'm pretty good at painting without a drawing anyway. I do that many times, um, but it is transparent paint, as I say, so you can see the drawing through it. I'm using a three quarter inch flat and I'm keeping my brush fairly wet. It helps to move the paint over the canvas or over the watercolour paper and it is a little uneven here and there but I'll adjust that as I go on. The ultramarine and the primary yellow mix together and give me a sort of green, sometimes lighter, sometimes darker depending on how I apply it. And I'm also painting through the glass vase. You have to see what makes glass look like glass in a painting is when you can see through it. You can see the background. Um, you can see the stems of the roses. I'm using raw sienna to suggest a tabletop. And you can see that through the vase as well. So I'm painting it straight across and I may or may not add more colours to that as I go along. I've cleaned my brush thoroughly in the water and I'm using raw sienna for my first rose. You won't see it in the final painting it will be just a hint of colour under the white petals. I'm painting three white roses, but there's a hint of colour in each of them. I'm showing you three different colours. Raw Sienna, French um, Ultramarine Blue and Alizarin Crimson. I paint my roses using a flat, usually a three quarter inch flat. Sometimes I go a little smaller when I'm painting buds and use a half inch, but um, I find the flat gives me a good petal shape. I've mixed a mid-tone green and I'm using the same three quarter inch flat brush. And I'm going to daub on a leaf shape. It's not the finished leaf shape, but it's just showing where the leaves are going to be in the painting. I should say that I've turned the brush on its edge to do this shape. As I've said before in other videos, I usually get a mid-tone on the entire painting, and then I go back in after to add other colors but basically to put in my shadow and my highlight. So for each color, um, each um, area of the painting, the leaves, the blossom, the glass vase, whatever I'm painting, I'm using three colors 
to paint that, a mid-tone, a highlight and a shadow. And I add other colours for interest um, to brighten something up, to make it pop a little or to give it more depth. I'm sorry you can't see this top flower that I'm painting. Um, I got my camera at the wrong angle, obviously. Um, but what I'm doing is using titanium white, I'm pulling in petals from the outer edge in toward the center. The raw sienna has already dried. Uh, when you're painting with water mixable oils, those colors will still be wet and um, you'll be pulling that color into the petal shape. But here we have a dried color and it will stay under the petals. You'll still see it a little bit. It will give a hint of color, but it won't be, um, it won't be mixed in. I think that's the best way of putting it. We don't see the entire petal in some cases. Some are foreshortened. Um, we're only seeing the tops of them. And for those, I use a sideways swipe. And it leaves a little extra uh, color, in this case white, on the top of the swipe. And um, I think it gives a good petal shape. The light is coming from the right and I've used blue on that side, which is all wrong. I need to use pure titanium white on that side. So um, I tried to brush it off with a wet brush and that didn't really work. So I scraped it off with a damp tissue. That works. Or you can leave it to dry and paint over it. It's your choice, really. I um, pull the paint horizontally to give the illusion of the roundness of the bars. It helps a little bit with that. And then another little trick I do is to sort of indicate a reflection of a window. And I do that by adding four squares of light. And don't forget the uh, reflection in the tabletop. I'm suggesting this is a polished tabletop. So I put a reflection in there and I have to put a line underneath the vase of raw umber in order to set it flat on the table, otherwise it looks like it's floating in midair. Using sap green mixed with French ultramarine blue, I'm putting in the shadow side of the leaves. I'm drawing the brush from the outer edge in toward the centre vein and you letting the brush do its own thing it will describe the leaf without me having to do much about it just the pull of the brush against the paper will give me a leaf shape As the titanium white dries, it dulls down a bit, so I have to go back in and reinforce those petals. And um, I might do this two or three times over the painting until I get it how um, 
I feel it should look. I don't do anything different. I follow the same stroke pattern that I had when I originally did the rose. And um, because those lines, those strokes appear underneath and you don't want to disturb that too much. I might extend the, the petals a little bit, but that's all I would do. Generally, I follow what I've already laid down. I like to paint the big old-fashioned roses, uh, the ones that are full-blown open and you can see the center stamens. And um, I generally lay down a dark color first, raw amber or alizarin crimson, and then put a lighter color, raw sienna. Sometimes I mix an orange to go on top and I just dab it on like um, individual little stamens. I put a link in the description to uh, Redbubble and Etsy where you can buy prints of my work if you're interested in that. Bubble My Shop is called Ca uh, Caroline's Art and on Etsy, Caroline's Art 123. Whatever's in the vase will be reflected in the glass, which is why I added some um, green to the glass to show the the leaves which overhang and cast a reflection. For the stems I usually start off with raw sienna and I will add some raw umber and possibly some alizarin crimson to the stems to give them sort of a little more vitality. I think the stems in roses are quite important and um, they're a very woody um, thing and they have lots of colour in them, depending on the variety, I suppose. I'm not sure what it depends on. But I always like to add colour to my stems to give them depth and substance. Um, I should say too that I don't add too many thorns. I paint a little triangle um, on the side of a stem and then I'll paint another one on the opposite side of a stem. That's how I show thorns. I don't know, I think they look quite realistic. I decided to add a little ultramarine blue to the leaves just to give them a little more shadow. I, I thought they wouldn't pick up too much light on that side of the um, vase. So I'd pick them out a little bit more with um, French ultramarine and sap green. I don't do all of the leaves, just a few just where I think the shadow would be darkest. So you can't see it at all, but I'm using a half inch flat to put in a little color on my one and only bud. Um, I wish I'd had my camera at a better angle, but I feel you got most of the picture anyway. It's only a couple of leaves and a bud that you don't see.
sometimes I get a little more water on my brush than I'd like and it dribbles down the picture but it's okay just to use a tissue to wipe that up most of the painting is dry anyway I'm so sorry you can't see this bit. I'm using a rigger or liner brush to add the sepals to the bud. There are usually five and um, as with the rest of my painting I start off with a mid-tone and then I add light and shadow where I think the uh, light would catch or where I think they are in the shadow. I always enjoy painting buds. I'm so sorry you can't see that bit. They're quite interesting to do. Stems are quite fun to paint. Um, you can make them quite interesting depending on the um, colours you use. I like to use some Taylor colours. I, had, I didn't use any in this painting but they really make a painting pop and add a lot of interest and there's sort of um, a lot of reflection to things like glass. I should have used some to show you that but I'll do that in another picture. I think that's really it for the painting. I've done most of um, what I can and um, I do think that the vase is out of proportion. It could have been smaller but it's not too bad. Uh, it could have been glassier too um, but I think this is it for today and I hope you enjoyed the video. I sat with the painting a little while and decided I liked it well enough to sign my name. I do think there are things that I could have done to it if I had more patience, but there you go. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like, share and subscribe. That helps my channel grow and I'd really appreciate it if you could find time to do that. And thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.